So let's continue to expand our knowledge of addition. So we are going to play again as mathematicians, so I want you to pause the video and ponder upon the following question. Remember, in the exponential notation in module 1, we saw that if I had 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, times two that I would rewrite that instead of this long multiplication string, I can rewrite that very succinctly as the number 2 with a little 7 on its head. And you would read that as 2 to the power 7, which represents 2 being multiplied 7 times by itself. And so what a natural question to ask would be, what should I write? 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. Plus two, plus two. I don't want to have to keep saying 2 plus 2 plus 2 all these times. What would be a natural way to write that now that you have done the previous section? So go ahead, pause the video, and you write down what we should write that as. Go ahead, think about it. All right, so let's take a look. We know that when you add like terms, you get copies of that unit so many times. So in this case, we're going to have 7 copies of 2. So we're going to have 7 times 2, because you're adding 2 7 times, which will in this case be 14. And so we are moving into thinking about addition, repeated addition, at least for whole numbers, as a new binary operation called multiplication. So let's go talk about what this multiplication is all about. So without addition, we do not have multiplication. Multiplication is also a binary operation and will denote it by this cross sign or the x sign or sometimes with a little dot. And it also acts on two objects with some specific rules. Let's just look at the following. If you lay down two rows of three objects, we can write that as 2 times 3. So 2 times 3, we're going to interpret that as two rows of three objects, which is basically 3 plus 3, or 6. We can also look at 3 times 2. So that would be what? 3 rows of two objects. So that would be 3 times 2, or that would be the same as 2 plus 2 plus 2, 3 times, which will give me 6. So you can see how with whole numbers, uh, multiplication is really repeated addition. So if we're working with at least one positive quantity, then you can think of it as repeated addition like we saw here. The objects themselves are called multiplicative factors or just factors. So for example here, 2 is a factor of 6, 3 is a factor of 6. Same thing here, 3 is a factor of 6. So 2 and 3 are called multiplicative factors or factors of 6. And 6, the result of the multiplication, is called the product of 2 and 3. So product of 2 and 3 is 6. So again, the multiplication symbol is this. Or sometimes people will write a little dot between two objects. Or the variables will appear side by side with no symbol. And that means multiplication. You saw some of this when we were doing exponents in the module 1. So let's make sure you understand the different notations we have so far. Pause the video here and see if you can come up with what is the difference between 2 to the third, 3 times 2, and 2 times 3. So go ahead, pause the video, and then we'll discuss it together. All right, assuming you have come back from doing your work, let's take a look. Might be good to write it in a tabular form so that in your head, it's very clear what all these different things are. So 2 to the third, I can write that as 2 times 2 times 2, 2 times 2, 4, 4 times 2, 8. 3 times 2, so we have 3 copies of 2 added together. So it will be 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is 6. Look at the difference between the 2 times 2 times 2, 2 plus 2 plus 2. They are different. The notation is different, and the value is different. So now, 
Let's take a look at 2 times 3. That would be 2 copies of 3. So that would be 3 plus 3, which is also 6. So what are the differences and similarities between each of these things? So let's take a look. We have in 2 to the third, 2 is the base. We have 3 is called the exponent. This is just a review of some basic terminology. And 2 is being repeatedly multiplied by itself 3 times. And you will read that as 2 to the power 3 or 2 to the third. Let's talk about 3 times 2. Here, 2 is a factor of 6. 3 is a factor of 6. We have 2 is being repeatedly added to itself 3 times, whereas in 2 to the third, 2 is being repeatedly multiplied by itself. So when you repeatedly multiply the same number, that's the base. And how many times you multiply itself by is called the exponent. Whereas here, we are adding 2 repeatedly 3 times. So that would mean that both 2 and 3 are factors. You would read that as 3 times 2. 2 times 3, you would read you have 3 is a factor of 6, 2 is a factor of 6. And here, 3 is being repeatedly added to itself, but only 2 times. Whereas in the second column here, 2 is being added 3 times to itself. So you read that as 2 times 3. So we have the answer to these two columns, 3 times 2 and 2 times 3, is the same, but for different reasons. Do you see that? So it's very important to be clear in the understanding of which notation does what. All right, let's talk about community property of multiplication. We know 2 times 3 is 2 rows of 3 objects. We can also write 3 times 2 as 3 rows of 2 objects, both of those giving us 6 as the product. And this property where 2 times 3 is equaling 3 times 2 is called commutative property of multiplication. This property is true not just for whole numbers, but for all the mathematical objects we've studied so far. So a times b equals b times a, or ab equals ba. In other words, changing the order in which you multiply does not change the final result or the final product. So again, make sure you know what terminology we are working with. Multiplication is commutative, means you can change the order in which you multiply and still get the same result. Let's look at associated property of multiplication. 3 times 2 times 4. So if 4 apples, this many times, this many rows of 4 apples. So 6 rows of 4 apples. Okay, What happens if I do this? Well, 2 times 4 means what? I have 2 rows of 4 apples, but then I want to lay those 3 times. So take a look. 2 rows of 4 apples, but then 3 times. OK, same number of apples, right? All right, so let's formally word it then. So if a, b, and c represent any three mathematical objects, not just the whole numbers, then if you multiply a times b first and then multiply by c, it's going to give you the same result as if you took a multiplied by the result of b multiplied by c. So the order in which you multiply does not change the final answer. So changing the grouping of the three Mathematical objects in a product does not change the result. Multiplication is associative. Let's talk about multiplicative identity. So if you take 1 times 4, which is one row of four apples, or if you take 4 times 1, which is four rows of one apple, either way you have four apples. So in general, then, we're going to say 1 is our multiplicative identity for all the objects that we've studied so far, because 1 times a equals a times 1 equals a. In general, then, multiplicative identity is an object that multiplied by all the objects in the set leave the object unchanged. In our case, it's going to be 1. 1 is multiplicative identity. Let's talk about distributive property of multiplication over addition. We are going to insist that you cannot just say distributive property. 
you must use all of those words. It will avoid you making mistakes. So let's first just see what the property is. Let's look at 4 times 3 plus 2. What does that mean to you? 4 rows of objects, how many? 3 objects and 2 objects together. So 3 objects, 2 objects, 4 times laid out in a row like that. So let's do that. Okay, so we have 4 rows of 3 plus 2 objects laid out like that. And that will give you what? 4 times 3, which is this part here, right? See how that's this part here? So 4 times 3, and then 4 times 2. So you can see how we're just taking that and splitting it. So giving us 20 objects total. So when you have 4 times 3 plus 2, you can rewrite it as 4 times 3 plus 4 times 2. What we're saying is that this multiplication is jumping over the addition. So 4 times 3 and plus 4 times 2. Multiplication distributes over addition. That's what that means. Let's take a look at this. So we have 5 rows of 4 objects in it. 3 plus 2, 5, of 5 rows of 4 objects. It's also the same as 3 times 4, 3 rows of 4 objects, and then 2 rows of 4 objects. And you see? So 20, look, both times we got 20. So multiplication distributes over addition from the left or from the right. It doesn't matter. And we should have expected that because our multiplication is commutative. All right, so formally, what does that mean? We say if A, B, and C represent any three mathematical objects we've studied so far, then A times B plus C is the same as A times B plus A times C. Or another way to say is A times B plus C is AB plus AC. Same thing here, except now we're multiplying by A from the right side. And same thing. So we can distribute multiplication over addition of two or more summons. So let's say I ask you to do this. That will be A times B plus A times C plus A times D plus A times C. Doesn't really matter how many objects you have here. Same thing from the other side. So multiplication distributes over addition. This is very, very important to remember. All right, find the volume of the solids that you see below. So let's start with a basic box. Let's say you have a 5 centimeters long, 3 centimeters wide, 2 centimeters tall box. What would be the volume? And what operation are you going to use, addition or multiplication? Well, volume of a box, length times width times height. So we're going to do 5 times 3 times 2 cubic centimeters. Cubic centimeter is the name of the unit by which we measure the volume. So here we have 5 times 3 times 2 cubic centimeters. That's why it's 30 cubic centimeters. What if we gave you this picture here? So again, let's assume that all of these boxes that you see in this one and the next two problems all are made up of the basic box 2 by 3 by 5 cubic centimeters. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4 boxes. Each of them are 5 by 3 by 2 cubic centimeters. So pause the video here and see what you can do. Well, we have two choices. Either you can do 30 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30 which is repeated addition, so that means it's multiplication of 30 four times. So 30 times 4 cubic centimeters or 120 cubic centimeters. All right, use the same basic 2 by 3 by 5 cubic centimeter box and do this next problem. So pause the video and see what you can do. I've colored the bottom row blue so you can see how it's two layers of what you had before. Go ahead. Pause the video, tell us what you got. Again, there are multiple ways you can do this. Since we already did the row of 4 as 30 times 4, we can either say 120 
plus 120 or 120 times 2 or we can say 30 times 4 times 2 or 120 times 2 which will give us 240 cubic centimeters. So in this next problem, again, use the basic one box that we gave you before to get the volume of this multiple stacks of boxes. So look at what we have. This top layer here, We in the back, we have one, two, three, four of these black ones. And in front of that top layer, we have the red boxes, which are also of the same size. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight layers stacked on top of each other. So go ahead, pause the video and see how you're going to find the volume of this stacked boxes. Assuming you have finished, let's take a look. So we have 30 cubic centimeters, which is one of these boxes times four because you have four in a row, times two because you have front and back. So you have stacked two front back. And then eight because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight layers on top of each other. And so that would be eight. Four times two is eight. Eight times eight, 64. 64 times 30 will give you 1920 cubic centimeters. So you can see no matter how complicated of a shape, we can find the stacked boxes volume just by using what operation again? Multiplication.